I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I have a guest today whose story is somewhat similar to mine, and uh, it's very fascinating. I think you'll enjoy it. It's uh, Jason Unruh, and uh, appreciate you coming. And I'm sure they'll see yeah. your name on the screen, but it's an unusual name. Uh, w what's the background of the... Uh, I'm told it's German. Okay, and, German. Uh, basically means... Um, unquiet or uneasy and <laughs> yeah i just tell people to remember me as unruly so it makes a lot of sense well we're going to find out that you've made some changes in your life here right. haven't we yeah or won't we so where were you born uh, i was born in santa rosa california okay and that's yeah. where you grew up was it and yeah i uh i lived there until i went and served a mission in paraguay now you weren't an lds originally though no. your family what were what were they um just kind of kind of there yeah, huh? no, okay no, yeah. so you didn't have a particular no growing really, up uh, yeah religion wasn't something we did as a yeah. family um there was a bit of pressure from uh my my uh, paternal grandmother to to perform that in some way but yeah. there was a ton of pushback from us on my dad okay. especially and um he just kind of let us choose our own path in that okay. regard so. so at some point you run into some lds friends and, yeah. and they yeah. kind of discuss uh, the church with you so tell yeah. us about that well these are my these were my best buds in in high school i kind of ran in a couple of different crowds one that was the very party heavy and the other these other guys yeah, are my mormon bu okay. mormon buddies were they were surfers like i was and um and, you know they had a lot of fun and didn't go do crazy do stuff, party you know? stuff. Okay. so um uh my lead-in into mormonism really was out in northern california waiting for waves to come in they would mention hey this joseph smith or the book of mormon oh, and yeah. it was actually it was really you know it was cool i had no background in anything and so everything they were saying just wow, was wild and cool and yeah, yeah yeah and you know these were my these were my uh these were my bros these were my yeah. really good buddies so yeah. um, probably four or five and then that group grew to where I was just solely hanging out with them and then suddenly there's you know a couple of missionaries talking oh, to me. Oh they brought the missionaries yeah, in yeah. to talk and, yeah. and so you eventually get baptized. Yeah after uh, I think I was that investigator I think I waited quite longer than they wanted until yeah, sure. until one of them cracked open the, well, you know, the best gift you can give a missionary is a baptism. I went, oh, okay, well. Well, here, here's a gift. <laughs> right. <I'll get> <laughs> no. uh, did you read the Book of Mormon, by the way? Uh, you know, I had. Have you gone to church, I guess? Uh, of course, kind of tons, yeah, yeah. I was doing that pretty regularly. Okay. And, um, you know, I loved it. Yeah. It was awesome. I loved it. it and then was... you decided to go on a mission. Yeah. Just soon after. Yeah, a year. And you got called to Paraguay. Paraguay. How did that go? Um, I loved it. Yeah? It was fantastic, yeah. And you feel like you had a good testimony of the gospel? I mean, obviously you were new into it, but you, you really felt like Joseph Smith was a prophet? I did. The Book of Mormon, true? I really did, prophets. yeah. And um, I remember when I was in the Missionary Training Center kind of feeling like I was behind the curve and 
Because and, you, you were a recent convert? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there was that. Um, but jumping into, um, you know, the mission in Paraguay, it was just, it was fun. It was great. It was, you know, um, you know, serving people. And, and it, it just all pushed the buttons that I wanted pushed. It was yeah. just really fantastic. Yeah. And years later, as I left and made it, um, quasi public, one of my mission buddies said, Hey, you know, but don't you remember the mission? I said, Yeah, I, I, the mission was fantastic. He said, Didn't we have fun? I said, Yes, we did. But yeah. that was the question he asked me, Didn't we have fun? Didn't I said, we have Well, fun. yeah, Isn't we had that fun. An interesting question. Yeah. yeah. And he's a guy, you know, I love and respect him, but that, that was just a weird question to ask, yeah. given what I had divulged, you know, hey, I'm, I'm probably at fault doing this always because, but I have done it a number of times. Okay. So kind of a leading question here okay. because it took me a few years later looking back on my mission, realizing that it was all about the church. It never was mm. about Jesus. Right. Did you feel that? Too, I didn't feel or? it when I was there. No, no. No, no, you don't feel that. I mean, you wouldn't even think of that. No. I mean, you're, but in hindsight, I, I always sense, okay, I'm, I really am pushing the Book of Mormon. Uh -huh. Families are forever. Yep. The plan of salvation, yep. the Book of Mormon, Joseph well, Smith. Joseph Smith, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was the organization. It was never Jesus. No, no. Very, I mean, very little. Well, much. I mean, he was spoken of. Yeah. And. I get where that kind of gets in some folks' way. Well, you know, we talk of Jesus is in the name of our church, and yeah. I get that. Um, yeah. But this is a religious thing we're doing, and it's you're lining up all these have tos and to dos to perform for yeah. the church, really. Yeah. I mean, you look at the hoops you got to jump through to go to the temple, ergo to be go to heaven. Yeah. And that's all just stuff, you know. <laughs> Another interesting thing that happens while you're on your mission is that your mom and a sister get converted to the church. Right. Woohoo! Yeah. I was so stoked. Your, some, your buddies and yeah. you, I'm sure, yeah. all contributed to getting them. But then something happened as you came home. What happened? Oh, well, by the time I got home, they were inactive. And you um, were... I was, so, <laughs> I was so bummed out because, again, they had become part of my eternal family, and now, yeah. guess what? Uh -oh. They're gone. Oh, boy. Um, and of course, then there's uh, this the shame part of it. Well, I didn't. Somebody didn't do something right, or I didn't do something right, or I my testimony wasn't strong enough. Yeah. And yeah, it bummed me out. And honestly, I never really spent time to ask why. I just kind of really? quietly was bummed about it. Now you were you ended up getting married in the temple. I did. Bountiful Temple. Found yeah. a good LDS girl to marry. Yes. And Met her on her mission. On her mission. Yes, I did. Oh, she yeah. has a return mission. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so you're married now for many years. And, Twenty-one years. Yeah. 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 And then uh, she's very patient. And, and four children. <laughs> I understand four children. So. Yeah. Well, what happens along the way here? Oh. You're active. I mean, you held callings, elders' quorum, gospel doctrine teacher. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I, our life was designed around this. We we had purposely. You know, since this was where the truth was encapsulated, yeah. we were, I'm all in, she's all in. Um, we raise our kids on purpose all in. And it just was where truth was. And so I can't, looking back, it's like I couldn't imagine anything was wrong there. Yeah. But around 2000, I'm going to guess here, um, 2006 or seven, maybe sooner. Yeah. I would go to church and those things that I had spoken of before that were true, like I know Joseph Smith's a prophet, I know the church is true, I know whatever prophet is the prophet, and, yeah. and those were things I knew. Yeah. You know, I felt them, I, I, you know, there was emotion behind that, and so mm. suddenly I'm sitting in church and somebody else is saying those things, and I get this big bonk or this clunk inside me. Like, like no. Like it just... Joseph Smith's a prophet. And it was like, gut, no. Wow. Yeah. And what do you do with that? I know. So I'm so sitting there. So you're listening, thinking. Well, I'm looking around <laughs> going, is, it, is this a joke? I mean, what? Because it was, it was, not that it was audible, it wasn't, yeah. but it was this profound moment of wisdom. And it was. Had you had other concerns about none. the church? None. Never, or? ever. Never. Nope. I. With my belief, it was, you know, because I, I knew about the old temp temple ceremony and it was, I explained away, okay, great. So they changed that, that's cool. 
blacks in the priesthood, you know, no big deal. There was, it was, if they said, you know, we just, we're not supposed to know these things right now. Oh. I accepted that yeah, too. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I get that. Oh, great. But all of a sudden. And all of a sudden. This over a period of time? Yeah, it, just... it was 2006, 2007, 2008. I mean, it just kept happening. I'd go to church. This is the true church bonk. <laughs> and I am just starting to stack these things up that should be true for me mm -hmm. that are not true. And I know it. I can't explain it away. I'm starting to talk to my wife about it. I am agonizing. I am freaking out because if this isn't true, then I don't know what is. Yeah. And well, this is my eternal family, so I'm not, you know, am I going to hell? I, I don't know what's going on. What does your wife say? My wife's awesome. Yeah. My wife is leaps and bounds cooler and better than me. And when this was going on, I am terrified and I am like thinking, we're done. Oh. I'm losing is, my family. It is a scary thought. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm still true. wells up this stuff. Yeah. And so I remember just kind of being a real big jerk <laughs> to her about it. And I was going to head it off at the pass and I really tried to push her away. I really tried to push her out of the church, out of the marriage. Push, oh. Like, like I was going to drop her before she dropped me because I know the church says that, you know, you just you kick the guy to the curb and that's losing his testimony. The I've ruined it. And... A rock on the pond that shouldn't have been thrown. So, but she kept coming back with love and you're my guy and I chose you and I'm just like what a sweetie, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 So that kept happening, and I finally decided around somewhere around 2010, I, I can't, I can't go, and I can't fake it, I can't pretend, and I remember I had borne my testimony mm, a few months before I left, and I couldn't say that I knew anything about the church was true, and I even said that I can't say this, but oh, in your testimony, I you did. said that, wow. But um, it must have raised an antenna or two. It really, I don't know that it did because yeah. I remember the bishop who was my buddy came up and he's like, that was just awesome because what I said was, I don't know, but I do believe in Jesus and I just, I can't get past that. Yeah. And it was wrecking me because Jesus was there. Jesus was supposedly, this was his church, church oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So it just wasn't working. And so I finally... Around 2010, I'm like, I can't do it. Honey, Leisha, I'm leaving. And she stood by me the entire time. And wow. uh, she kept going. And I found myself um, trying to find work on Sundays to just, just avoid. Just excuse yeah. to not go to church. Yeah, so I did. And then... Well, at some point, the bishop calls you in. or, or Oh, yeah, they wanted to renew my temple recommend. Yeah, tell us about that. So that was actually before I left. And... Calls me in, one of my buddies was the first counselor, and I go, and I was like, eh, you know, I don't want that. I don't want the people to recommend. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, I got the kind of eye pop out thing, and, <laughs> and um, it was just, no, I don't, I don't want it, I don't believe in it, and I don't know why I don't believe in it, I just know I don't believe in it. And you really didn't, at this point, you really didn't know all the negative stuff I about knew none gospel of doctrine or history no. or anything. I either knew none of it or the stuff that I did know, like it, I'd mentioned the Blacks and later. Well, yeah, yeah and it, it was like, okay, we'll put that in a compartment for later because I, yeah. you know, I don't need to know. Don't need to deal with it, right? Yeah. So it was all pretty clean. I mean, I left the church with. I wasn't mad at it. I wasn't angry at it. In fact, for convenience sake, I, I agonized. I wished I could still be Mormon yeah. so that it would be easy on my kids, it would be easy on my wife, it would be easy on me. Mm -hmm. And it just, it couldn't happen. I couldn't will it to happen. Mm. Now, at some point you go into your office. Yeah. Tell us about Well, about this, this happened. Um, my wife, I started becoming um, one of my go-to things is when I'm scared, I get angry. And she's like, you're becoming way too angry. You need to find God. She's like, I don't care if you're Mormon, Christian. You could be oh, Buddhist. You could be this? Catholic. I don't care. You're driving me crazy. Go find God. And so I'm like, great. I'm going to be Buddhist because that's cool. I'm just going to do that. And so I'm reading Buddhism's like, great. And um, 
at one point she says, why don't you go with your buddy to that church he goes to, which was K2. And I'm like, uh, okay, I'll go to the Christian church, whatever. And that's going to be a freak show because I hear they got a band and, you know, <laughs> it's going to be totally irreverent and lame. And I go there and there's this gal on a guitar and acoustic and she's just praising Jesus in song and I just lose it. Just lose it. It's like we're praying to God through song. I'm praying to God through song. Wait a minute. I've just been trying to tell myself I'm atheist and now I'm praying. To, what? And I'm just... That's just, what happened to me too. It was crazy. Yeah. So I go back the next week. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm, you know, just going crazy again. And so I go home that, after that second week and I kneel down. And I'm like, look, God, I, I believe in you. I, I do. I get it. I'm crying constantly now and I'm feeling you. But I don't get this. I don't get the Jesus. I don't get the everything, how it all fits together. I just don't get it. So you, you're going to have to help me. Yeah. Like, I can't do this. I am terrified and happy and I don't get it and I, I just need you. So it was this answer of something like in my head it was just like I've got you, I love you right where you are. I know you're a mess. I know you're angry. I know you're scared. I know you're just trying to blow everything up so it goes away. I got you and I gave my life to Christ right there as I knelt on my office floor and I go out into the living room and it was kind of like this awesome and oh great moment like oh I kind of know what this means you know so I go out and I said something like hey Alicia well I'm Christian it turns out <laughs> and she's like what she's crying and so that started this journey of just for lack of a better word, I guess, letting Jesus walk with me. Because sure. I've been just stiff-arming him like crazy. Yeah. And realizing that he's got me, A, B, he loves me where I'm at. And it's it, it was nothing doctrinal for me. It was just relational. It was, it was this pure, I love you moment. And I just wanted to be with him. I wanted to dig, dig into the word. I wanted to go to church. I wanted to just be with him what a tremendous feeling it was what freedom yeah Did you feel that, that is a good word yeah. actually yeah had you understood grace as a mormon no i mean the word yeah it was said often enough yeah, we, but yeah. this this idea that this thing i don't deserve i'm it's, getting because jesus loves me yeah like i don't i know i deserve it way less than everybody and you know I know how messed up I am yeah did you really even understand that sacrifice on the cross no I know I didn't no no I didn't get it it was it really was meant. it was kind of a it was like a uh, it was like the story that I was supposed to relate to this the story I was supposed to understand deeply and I didn't get it until I got it in the office of Again, it was information on this end, or I'm in a relationship with the God of the universe here, and it was overwhelming. Yeah. Has, had the Bible, has the Bible changed for you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean. Um, you carried it around as a missionary. Sure. As a Mormon, yeah. You know? It weighted down my bag, but, um, you know, it was the Book of Mormon we were slinging. Sure. Um, but tremendously, I mean, I, I look back and go, how could I have looked at this, these words as these imperfect things or these things that needed to be revised and edited by some guy? Yeah. Um, and I remember my Bible study or scripture study, which included Book of Mormon and who knows what else, but yeah. it was a, it was a chore. Yeah. I didn't want it to be a chore, but it always was a chore. I was like trying to carve out time to read the scriptures, Blech, you know? <laughs> and for and for some reason, um, at some point, after this moment in the office, it was, it's like, this is going to sound dumb, but Jesus is in there and I need, to I need yeah. and it's like, it was like, I got the analogy of food before I heard it. And it was so dumb to me. And in this moment, I'm like, 
I get that analogy now because this is, I want this moment. I want this time with Jesus. I want, I want to hear what it. he says yeah. and I want to be with him. Yeah. And that was totally different yeah. than what I'd experienced before. Now your wife has been supportive through all this. Yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit more about her oh, man. journey. And we'd love to hear her story sometime if she's yeah. ever care to share that. But, yeah. uh, so well, she's us. amazing. Um, and we did the two church thing for a year or two. You go with her, did you? Uh, no, she I wouldn't. Went. She yeah, took the kids. She would, she would take the kids to the Mormon church and then once a month and then it became twice a month and then it became three times a month. They would come, come with you. <laughs> yeah, because she wanted to do church with me. And what did she think of the service as a maybe uh, not a as christian service well yeah the christian service is just kind of a visitor as it were you know what she actually beginning. really enjoyed it did she did she, she, she sense able, that praising and she did yeah yep okay. um culturally though she was still really tight sure, sure. and so uh, you know i left the mormon church pretty clean um, about a year year and a half into my christianity though it became me wanting to kind of beat her out of Mormonism with yes. the word. Yeah, we get I a little over. I became don't that we? guy, that yeah. Christian, and <laughs> you know, her heels just just dug in, and we had fights. And she was the one showing the grace. She was the one that kept coming out and just saying, "You know, I love you." And and I am like, after receiving this gift, I'm still this. I become this guy. This, this yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. You know, we hear those stories and I was that guy. Unruh. Yeah, <laughs> unruly. unruly. Yeah. So, right? So, um, my buddies at church have been saying, you know, this is this is for Jesus, not for you, man. This is not, this is not your deal. This it's is, not even on your shoulders, nope. is it? Nope. This is not your God's job, hands. bro. Yeah. And I felt God saying that to me too. And I finally, it's funny that I gave my life to him, but there's still these little compartments. Well, I'm going to take that. I'm going to keep that. I can do this. And I'm going to keep that. And my wife, my, my son that's struggling, I'm going to keep those because I'm a better parent than you got. Apparently that's what I thought. So my wife, I, I just have this moment with Jesus and I'm just like, I don't, she's yours. You love her more than me. She's yours. And, Whatever this journey looks like, I'm out. I'm out of trying to force it to be a certain way. Yeah. It, she is yours. And then this movement started to happen with her that was not what I would have designed, and it was super perfect. Really? And then there was this moment where we had had an argument again. My fault. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> She goes out and has this wrestle with God. She's taking this, I don't even know what you call it, this tool that cuts weeds, and she was cutting alfalfa with it. And she's like, God, you know, this is not going to go well, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to go to this Christian church all the time, and I'm just going to go all in here. And, and there's other things that happened in this conversation, but when she called me, she says, I'm taking my garments off. I'm oh, like, my goodness. What? And I try to talk her out of it. Like, well, don't do that for me. She's like, no, no. This is where God has me. I'm, oh I'm goodness. here. Praise God. And it's been an awesome journey like that ever since. And we have been, you know, doing this crazy walk, this messy, awesome, horrible, awesome walk. It is a challenge, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Christianity can be challenging, yeah. but it's so, so delightful, so joyful. Yeah, when, when I surrender. Yeah. And realize that the God, again, yeah. the God of the universe has me. Yeah. And why do I keep trying to take it back? Yeah. Well, so it's been awesome. And, you know, my wife and I have been married 21 years, despite my best efforts when I left the church to push her away. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we walk together uh, in Christ. How's mom? How's your mom and sister? And uh, They're great. You know, they've always... Have they been supportive oh, of yeah. you all the way through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, when, when they left, you know, I don't really know the story, but they leaned more into Christianity oh. pretty right off the bat. Oh, did they? Especially my sister. And so I remember talking to her husband and he, he'd always have a bit of an eye roll about Mormonism and I would defend it staunchly. And yeah. we had this conversation and he goes, yeah, really wasn't a great thing, was it? I was like, <laughs> well, I mean, I thought it was. Well, what do you think, I guess some basic questions, but what do you think the LDS most misunderstand about Christians? 
Well, Grace, obviously. Grace, for sure, yeah. Um, we can get into a lot of the, the doctrines of who God is in His nature, but the idea that there is this gift out there. Um, and when I read the Bible, it seems pretty obvious. It does, doesn't it? Now, but, we, but you didn't cover those scriptures as a missionary, I'll bet. The ones that were obvious about uh, grace no, and, no, and no, works and, no. and the law and that. Right? No, it was more of the do, do, do stuff. Yeah. But the idea that there is a God who, who came and died and loves me, loves you, and he wants to... He wants us to walk with him. He wants us to accept what he's done. Yeah. And there's this thing yeah. called being saved, salvation. And that's it. It's this, it's this relationship that I have with God and not this thing where I got to, oh man, you know, I got to make sure I don't drink that or do this or say that. And I got to make sure I go do this teaching and go to the temple and work, 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 work. Yeah. That's been a it's, it's, it's been a joyful not, freedom for yeah. me. Yeah, not all that burden. Uh, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Yeah. <laughs> um, your family then is uh, you go to church together and we do. See? Yeah. Yeah. We do, and that's been um, it's been a little hard because it's it we lost a little bit of currency with our kids because it was here's the truth. And now, whoosh. and they were a little older too. Some of them. Yeah, I mean, I have a 16-year-old daughter. Well, an 18-year-old son is in college. 16-year-old daughter, 14-year-old daughter, 12-year-old daughter, and they are now in a spot where they're comfortable. Oh, that's the last right. six, eight months, you that's know, good. going to the Christian church, and they identify as Christian, um, or they identify as well, I don't know about God. I don't yeah. know. I'm figuring it out. It's like you know what. Well, I think, God's going to work that out with I you. think the fascinating thing is that you were saying that it really was never doctrinal or even the, the part of the history of the church. I guess oh. you've learned more about that now. Yeah, and it kind of bugs me it. now. Yeah. Um, Things that you didn't know about right. history. And, and I would theology. use that. That's the hammer I would beat my with your wife. With yeah, with that doctrine of, you know, this prophet said this and this is what the Book of Mormon and blah, blah, blah. And it was just, it was a mess. But I just think it's interesting. God has worked in your life so amazingly to uh, bring you along and have you mm. come to understand. Well, our time's up, mm. actually. And oh. any last 10-second thing you want to say to family or friends? <laughs> uh, you know, it just what I've been saying is that there is a God. His name is Jesus. And he loves us. <laughs> and he loves us. Yeah. And that's Jason, it. thanks so much. What yeah. a wonderful story. I appreciate your time. Thanks. And we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.